Hi, I'm Melissa Cobb. Come fly with AOPA this week, ride along with a brand new private pilot into the High Sierra fly-in. Learn what could have gone wrong that caused a King Air E90 to crash into a car dealership. And find out what's coming up with your sweepstakes Cessna 170. Plus, get some tips from me on how to fly with young kids. All right, we'll talk about a post check ride celebration. Imagine this, Allie Bruckner earned her pilot certificate and then a week later flew into the High Sierra fly-in. Check it out. Welcome to Dead Cow Lake Bed. The dust is everywhere and the mountains surround us in a panoramic beauty. There's nothing like it in the world. It's just a, a surreal experience seeing all these general aviation planes coming in together and um, having the runways lined up and landing on a lake bed is, is just crazy. People from all over gather to celebrate a shared love for all things backcountry. It's a wonderful place filled with beauty and adventure and we'll get back to it in just a moment. But first, we have to talk about what happened Friday night at High Sierra Fly-In. A fifth wheel that was carrying a hot air balloon caught fire. The tanks for the balloon kept blowing up and nobody knew what happened at first. We thought it was one of our friends being killed. It was horrific, till we got word that it was an empty RV and that nobody was hurt. Dead Cow Crash Fire Rescue was on the scene in moments and did a great job. In the effort to get everyone on the ground amid the explosions, a cub encountered wake turbulence from a larger airplane, stalled and spun. Now we've just had a plane down. The pilot reportedly mashed on the rudder and turned what could have been a catastrophe into a very hard landing. There were minor injuries, but everyone lived to tell the tale. But Friday is just a footnote to an otherwise amazing weekend. So let's get back to the good part. This is a story of growth, a story of learning, a story of confidence building, a story of being the best version of yourself. I got my certificate um, now eight days ago. <laughs> the ink is barely dry on Allie Bruckner's temporary ticket, and she's already expanding her horizons. Exercising those privileges, we came to Dead Cow, uh, and we're having some fun at uh, High Sierra Flyin. She flew a 172 over from Hayward, California with a group from California Airways Flight School. Her CFI Doran came along to help her stay safe while expanding her backcountry experience. And High Sierra Fly-In is a great launching place for backcountry flyouts. We went over to um, Black Rock, um, had some fun over there, uh, shot some cool videos um, of airplanes. Woo! Let's go. It was no surprise that someone who just demonstrated her proficiency last week to a DPE absolutely nailed the soft field landing. Allie isn't the only person finding growth this year. Stoll Drag continues to expand and is welcoming some new faces, including one you probably know. Michael, are you ready? Ready. No, are you ready? Michael Goulian tried his hand at it, and frankly, he did great. It was really fun. You know, it's obviously a discipline that I don't have and didn't have until this week, but I came out early, practiced with Kevin Quinn out in the desert, learned a little bit more about it, and then, you know, like anything on race day, you want to do your best, so I was just trying to crank it as hard as I could, and it was super, super fun and learned more about this airplane that I've been flying, this Watt Cub, uh, in two days than I've learned in the whole year we've owned it. Mike's first showing resulted in second place in the bronze class. Not bad for a first time. In the silver class, Kathy Page had to come up with a new airplane. Had a lot of fun. My brand new carbon coat. Got fifth place in the silver class. I've never even seen the silver class. Kathy used to fly Stoll Drag in a clipper. She's still learning her new carbon cub and wants to do even better next time.
Steve Henry is head and shoulders faster than anyone else in the gold class, but even this world champion Stoldrak pilot isn't satisfied with his performance. He's chasing a never before broken 50 second time. I, I do, I want to get it. That's, that's, a, that's my next goal here, is to get the 50 second. But... No matter if you're a brand new private pilot, a titan of aerobatics, an airline pilot with a tailwheel habit, or the fastest pilot in stall drag, Steve says just keep on growing. And that's, you need to get really, really proficient. You've got to really know your airplane and, uh, and have fun with it. Come to things like this. Come to these stall drag races. Take Kevin's course. Do backcountry flying. Practice the right things. Learn, learn you know, the right things and practice those. Get better. And bring those skills and the desire to be the best version of yourself to this wondrous place where people from all walks of life and all skill levels gather to fill their hearts and anything else they brought with dust. But it's, it's one amazing experience. I'll hold this for the rest of my life. At Dead Cow Lake Bed, Sierra Harrop, AOPA pilot. Way to go, Allie. Congratulations on your pilot certificate, and that looked like a ton of fun. Well, last week, a King Air E-90 crashed on approach into Mid-Ohio Valley Regional Airport in West Virginia, and our very own AOPA Air Safety Institute Senior Vice President Richard McSpadden shares some possible causes that could have happened to cause the accident, as well as lessons that we can learn from it. Let's take an early look at the King Air E-90 crash. The King Air was en route from Columbus, Ohio to Parkersburg, West Virginia. Their plane was flown by two pilots, both of whom were multi-engine rated and instrument rated pilots. Everything appeared normal on takeoff, cruise, and on descent. There were again vectors to the RNAV runway 21 approach at Mid-Ohio Airport. We heard them acknowledge clearance for the approach. They were asked to report the final approach fix. They reported the final approach fix inbound. And then shortly after that, acknowledged landing clearance by the tower. And then about 30 seconds later, we hear someone on the frequency asking if the King Air was okay. We have video that shows what happened inside the final approach fix in terms of the final moments of the flight. You can see from the video that the airplane is out of control. The pilots have lost control of the airplane. So what are some lessons we general aviation pilots can take from this mishap, regardless of which direction the NTSB investigation goes? The first is icing conditions. We're entering winter conditions, so icing much more uh, higher potential for us this time of year. So the first is to make sure we're doing good pre-flight look at our weather products to know whether or not icing is forecast or likely. If there's ever any icing forecast, it's a bad idea if you don't have icing equipment to fly into forecast icing. Avoid it. Secondly, if you find that you're in the icing uh, conditions, try to get out of it as quickly as possible. So some ways you can get out is Try to descend out of the icing if you're able. Try to move horizontally based on the weather conditions, knowing which in which direction the weather gets better is an option. And then if you find yourself in icing conditions as you're coming into land, a couple things to keep in mind is first, keep your speed up and don't use flaps. Most manufacturers recommend a no flap uh, landing if there's icing involved and they don't have any kind of de-ice equipment. But if you have configured and you notice icing starting to build up, keep your speed up and keep configured just as you are. Don't change your configuration. You can also use this mishap to think about and remind ourselves about single engine procedures and twin aircraft, especially in IMC conditions. It's a demanding scenario, both on takeoff and on landing inside the final approach fix. We need to chair fly those procedures every time we fly, knowing exactly the steps we'll take if we were to lose an engine during those two critical phases of flight. It's a good idea to run through that procedure, especially if you have a co-pilot every time you fly, and then a part of your approach briefing on landing to talk about how you'll handle that if it happens on short final or inside the final approach fix. 
So it'll be quite a while before the NTSB releases the probable cause of this accident, but regardless of the, the cause, Richard shares a lot of valuable lessons that we can learn, and in particular this time of year as we're heading into the winter months, his advice on icing is spot on and something we need to keep in mind. All right, well now I'd like to turn to something lighter, and that's our AOPA sweepstakes Cessna 170 been flying a lot and most recently it was out on assignment at the Flying W Airport and Resort in New Jersey. Last week AOPA got together with several social media influencers and personalities. Kyle Newsom, Ethan O'Rourke, Joe Costanza, who you know as Bananas, Stephanie Brinkman known as Stephanie, Ed Gormley known as Fly the Northeast, Kelly Novacek known as Kel Flies, Bruno, better known as Fly with Bruno, and Shayna Jones, we all got together and started flying around all over New Jersey. We were based out of Flying W Airport in Lumberton, New Jersey. And Joe, being uh, knowledgeable about the area, took off and led us around to several different locations, several different grass strips. We had everything ranging from a J3 Cub all the way up to a Cirrus SR20. We had a Cherokee 6 and my favorite airplane, the AOPA Sweepstakes 170. We spent some time doing some formation photo flying, spent some time over the beach, getting cool shots. So it was a whole lot of fun. The first couple of days, the winds were a little bit sketchy and maybe too strong for the tailwheel airplanes to fly. So we waited till the afternoon and got some really great evening lighting. We just spent a lot of time hanging out, talking aviation and spending time together, getting to know one another. So we got a lot of really incredible footage from the few days that we went flying. And we'll put links down below for all the Instagram profiles. Go check them out and see all the best shots we got from the week together. Well, special thanks to Kyle Newsom and Ethan O'Rourke for that footage. And hey, check out more of what they do. We'll put a link to their channels in the description below. Well, this AOPA Sweep 6 airplane is already turning heads, and today I have our social media marketers, Eric Webb and Kayla McLeod with us. They're actually managing the sweepstakes project. It's rare that we have them both together. So, <laughs> Eric, let me know, what is the reaction so far to the sweepstakes airplane? It's been pretty incredible. Uh, when I was flying it this past weekend in New Jersey, uh, we had people at the various airports we landed at coming out to check out the plane. Uh, people were coming out at FBOs, coming out of restaurants, even out of their own homes at some of the private airfields we were using. Um, I flew it this past weekend with my wife, took it to Garrett County Airport. I no sooner had the plane parked and was finishing chalking the wheels and the guy in the FBO was halfway across the ramp asking if I was coming to drop it off to him. So it's been a whole lot of excitement and I'm sure once we start on the upgrades that it's gonna be a whole lot more excitement. I know I'm excited yeah. to get, get my hands on it after Kayla gets the engine in there, but uh, <laughs> we'll see if I can get her to let go of it. Yeah, okay, Kayla, tell us what else is in store for the airplane? Yeah, I'm super excited because the Continental Prime IO370 engine upgrade is happening at my home airport, Peach State Aerodrome in Williamson, Georgia, at the Barnstormers Workshop. The upgrade's gonna start around the end of November. So if you're in the Atlanta area, come on down, check out the airplane and the upgrade. Uh, we'd love to have you. By appointment only though, right? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I, I think that's a first, actually. Uh, the sweepstakes project manager saying, hey, I'll give you a personal tour of, of uh, the upgrade as it's happening. So very cool. Yeah, come on out. All right, now these two have received some flack for what they have uh, either said on camera or written in print. <laughs> the uh, Mr. Webb and the 145 geriatric horsepower comment recently and Kayla with her ineffective rider comment. So. I love 170s, I'm a 170 owner, and I, if you own a 170, you're passionate about it, right? So um, I wanna let you in on a little secret. <laughs> this airplane, in all its glory, has already won them over, but they both have, their tailwheel time is in higher horsepower, lighter weight airplanes. So that's um, when they're talking about the 170's performance, they're coming from that background. But like I said, Kayla, she treats it like her baby. She saw it today. She already got on to Eric for not having it wiped <laughs> down. And Eric, he just gets back from a trip and then he's like in it the next day. He loves flying it. So they're taking really good care of your baby uh, and they love it. Let me just qualify the, the geriatric horsepower. The engine's near TBO. So that's all I was talking about. And higher density altitudes with, with me and my dad and our baggage <laughs> and full fuel tanks. It takes a little while to climb, so. Engine's fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining me, guys. Thanks. 
All right, well, you can see the sweepstakes airplane coming up soon. We're gonna have it at our AOPA hangout in Tampa, Florida, November 4th and 5th. And so, of course, at some point next year, we're gonna have the upgraded version traveling all around the country for events. I just wanna take a moment to let you in on some of our plans for the 2023 AOPA events. So next year, we're gonna be joining forces with air shows across the country. And that's because you've told us that you wanna see more aerial acts. So we're joining with these air shows for the aerial acts, but we're gonna bring the industry experts, the safety seminars and displays that, that you all love. So we're really excited about this format. The first one coming up is actually in February. We're gonna kick it off with the AOPA fly-in at the Buckeye Air Fair. That's February 17th through 19th at the Buckeye Municipal Airport. Now that's about 35 miles uh, west of Phoenix. So we hope to see you there and you can learn more about our event plans at the link in the description. All right, well, flying with family is something I always dreamed about. I grew up flying with my dad and I have two children now. And so my husband and I love taking our kids flying. It can be a little stressful. Uh, so we wanted to share some of the gear that helps our kids feel more comfortable in the airplane. Our Cessna 170 is in for annual, but we have the opportunity to take a trip to go see Jason's sister for the weekend. And we're borrowing my dad's 172. And we wanted to see if the pack and play for our daughter and the mattress were gonna fit in the plane. That's the first thing you gotta do is make sure everything's gonna fit. It fits. It does. Now that we have the big items in, we stuff the rest of our kids' belongings into the back of the airplane. <laughs> That's everything. That's a everything. lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> After we get everything to fit in, we top off the baby and then we're on our way across the Ohio Plains. So on this leg, Jason's flying while I tend to the kids in the back. Flying with young kids can be challenging, but there's some gear that we've found that makes it more comfortable for the kids and in turn makes it more pleasant for us. So our three-year-old is wearing a David Clark model H10-13Y aviation headset. It's basically the David Clark headset you know and love, but sized for kids. Our six-month-old has the Bands Baby earmuffs. They feature a soft head strap and foam ear cup, so it gently hugs her head and protects her ears. And it is recommended by a lot of pilot moms on social media as well. So one challenge is finding car seats that will fit in the back of an airplane. Our three-year-old's in a Graco Forever DLX 4-in-1 convertible car seat. It's actually FAA approved and it easily fits in the back seat of, of the airplane next to the other car seat. It can fit in a 170 or a 172, so really any four-seat general aviation airplane. Another must, soft toys. If the toys get thrown in the cockpit, the kids won't get hurt, you won't get hurt, and they can't get jammed inside the flight control areas. It, it really does take a lot of work to load up the kids and keep them comfortable, but if you just have the right gear and you do a little bit of extra prep, it's really gonna go a long way to make your family flights more enjoyable. I know it has for us. Well, I hope those tips were helpful. And I know a lot of you have some sage advice from flying with young kids, and I would love it if you would drop that advice for me in the comments. Definitely look forward to seeing that. Thank you for watching Fly with AOPA. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you're not already an AOPA pilot, we'd love to have you join us. There's gonna be a link at the end of this video. You can just click right on it. And if you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. We always appreciate that. This week, we leave you with some beautiful footage from the High Sierra Fly-In. Uh, our very own Sierra Harrop captured it. And there's a little surprise in there for you. You can catch the Vans Aircraft RV-15.